It's the NFC Championship game, and the road to a Super Bowl goes through San Francisco. It's the Lions and the 49ers, next on EA Sports. It was a frequent sight in the 80s and 90s, and it's continued on till today. Playoff football in the Bay Area as we welcome you to Levi Stadium in Santa Clara. Coming up, a battle to represent the NFC in this year's Super Bowl, and we've got a potential classic in store as it'll be the Detroit Lions taking on the San Francisco 49ers. Hello, everyone. Alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. The postseason continuing here on EA Sports. And, man, it is electric in here, and it should be conference championship time. I don't know about you, but my butterflies in my stomach, they have iron wings in this one. <laughs> and every guy I've ever talked to has all said the same thing. This game, the conference championship game, may have more intensity than even the Super Bowl because you know what the stakes are. You're trying so hard to get to the big game that this is the this is the one that's the real challenge. So here are the Lions now coming out for their opening drive. They're brought out by a former number one overall pick coming off one of his best seasons ever in year seven of his career, now in year eight, Jared Goff. And we can talk all we want about football being a team game and leaning on different parts and aspects in order to get it done. And that's entirely true during the regular season. Some weeks it's the defense, the special teams running the football. But in the playoffs, all the pressure reverts to the quarterback, and he has to play well and play at a really high level in order for his team to win. It'll go as a loss of a yard on the game's first play. Second down. Here's Goff. That is incomplete. I don't see more than trying to get him the football out of the backfield. They love what he can do in open space, and they believe that he creates mismatches they can exploit. Little trouble thus far on their opening drive as they come up on a third and 11. Now Goff. The throw out wide going to be incomplete. That's the first third down try of the game, and clearly something was off in the execution of that play. Good news, they've got a whole game left to clean that up and start clicking on those key third down throws. And here now the punter Fox as he sends this one away. And it's fielded at the 34. A beautiful fake. A very good kick there, but 15 yards on the return. And this offense takes over in great shape right at the 50, first and 10. So here's the first drive now for the 49ers. Leading them out, someone who took the league by storm last year is the most famous Mr. Irrelevant ever. From Iowa State, it's Brock Purdy. And you'd think as a young QB, there'd be some nerves leading an offense out to start a game, but haven't seen any sign of them right now. And speaking with him earlier this week, sense that the pressure wouldn't get to him. He feels comfortable being the face of this offense and shouldering the expectations on game day, even if he doesn't quite have the years of experience other quarterbacks do. And he is tackled inside the 40, not quite to the 35. 13 yards there at a Niner first. And that's not a play that you see all that often at the start of a drive, but some teams, they don't mind doing it. And that one, well sold by the offensive lineman. They showed the pass, and then they got out into space, able to get some good blocks downfield and allow the play to be successful. And this will go as a gain of seven as he gets it to the 30-yard line. A nice run here early on. It doesn't take a great play call to realize you want to establish a guy of his caliber who runs like this early because they'll pay dividends as the game progresses. Second down and right back to McCaffrey. He's able to get it down to the 25-yard line. Four yards to pick up, first down. Nice job there finding room to maneuver, and he worked his way into another first down. And look, they had great field position to start, but boy, they've done a nice job taking advantage of it. Now they're just hoping to cap it off. And across the track, into the end zone. It's a 49er touchdown. Niners have struck first in this NFC title game. 
Well, we knew they had the crowd on their side. Their defense has already made a stop, and now here's an opening drive touchdown. Yeah, how about the defense making the stop, offense feeling their momentum that they've generated, and turning it into points on their side. So now you've got a team working together, and you get the crowd involved fully on their side in this ball game. And in this playoff atmosphere, that 12th man means even more. Here is Wisnowski to boot it away following the touchdown. Peoples-Jones going to elect not to run this out, and they'll begin at the 25. Back onto the field come the Lions for their second overall drive. And the last drive, their first drive, three and out. What changes here, if anything? I think it's making sure the guys that you trust the most with the ball, the biggest playmakers you have, that they touch it on this possession to try and get things moving. So get it to the horses. Without a doubt, they're the ones that typically end up in the end zone. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. Out of the gun. Golf. That's going to be caught by Josh Reynolds. And they work this well upfield across the 45. A gain there of 21 yards. But one of the ways that quarterbacks keep all the receivers alive in a play, never lock in on any one guy. Make sure you keep your eyes moving, scan the field. And here he finds the open guy for a nice pickup. On first and ten, here's Gibbs. And he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. Well, any lane that might have been open there was closed pretty quickly. And that was because the defensive front, they won that battle at the point of attack at the line of scrimmage. They used great leverage, held their spot, and stacked him up. Second down, and they go back to Gibbs. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. A yard in the wrong direction makes third down tougher. Third down and nine. Oh, that's a tough one right there. He ran right into the teeth of the blitz as the linebacker was freed up in order to stump that one for a loss. I think quarterbacks got to see that. Got to find a way to audible to something a little more advantageous. Now throwing on third down there, but he cannot connect. One first down here, and that's all, folks. Good work by this defense to hold things in check and force a punting situation. Jack Fox out to punt here on fourth down. And he'll get off a fairly short kick here as this is toward the sideline. And this punt will go out of bounds. I think it'll be inside the 25, and it will. Right at the 24-yard line is where they'll spot it. Back out there comes the 49ers offense ready for their second drive. This could end up being a pretty big drive. I mean, look, yes, it's early in this game, but they scored the touchdown. They got the stop. And now if they could get in the end zone here again, CD, they could grab an early stranglehold on this one. Yeah, they certainly can. And that's what you're looking for. Where's the advantage? Can you gain it? Can you press it? Now for them, finishing it off because right now it's out there for them. They've just got to go seize it. Second down and six now. Now they run. It's Mason. Seven yards there on the first down. And that's a nice pickup of the first down on that second down run. And at that yardage gained, they can run that play on any down. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. Purdy will set up to throw it here. And his throw is incomplete. They'll put a check mark in the box where the defense coordinator was saying, how well can we stay with these receivers if we're in man coverage? Because he just did it on that one. Force the incompletion. That allowed him to get bolder with his pass rush, won't it? Absolutely. Freeze up your guys elsewhere. Let's go. On second down, McCaffrey. Oh, a heck of a move. Man. Yeah, he'll be out of bounds after getting this one across the 40. 47 yards rushing for him now in the ball game. Well, this play sequence was really kind of called in reverse. Incomplete pass on first and 10. Nice run on second and 10 when probably everyone was expecting them to throw the football. Now, if you're the defense, what are they going to do on third down? You're a little off balance. Now a shot taken on third down, but it's going to wind up incomplete. Now that's a good bounce back after giving up a touchdown on the opening drive. Just one first down permitted and then out. Obviously no loss of confidence with that defense, and now they get to turn it back to their offense. 
Wisnowski on to punt as he sends this one away. This will be fielded at the 17. And he gets it here to right around the 24 before he's out of bounds. Call it an even 40-yard punt. 7-0 on the return. And the Lions will take over. Goff in this Lions offense set for a first and 10 at their own 24. Here's a play fake as they set up to throw. Well, this is taken in. It's complete. He's still on his feet. Touchdown, Detroit. Jamison Williams, 76 yards. And the Lions are able to strike quickly here as they are in for six. It took them a while to get their speedster involved, but they found him downfield there. And what we've discovered as we've watched games is the speedster doesn't have to have a lot of catches, doesn't have to have volume in order to have a huge impact on the game. His speed scares the heck out of defenses, and other guys can capitalize, but when you finally hit him and he carries it all the way into the end zone, that's what you're paying him for, that big threat that can make big plays on a limited number of catches. That's how you step on the stage with your first catch, take it to the house. Extra point put through by Boswell, and we are tied at seven. So all even at seven now as they kick it away. And he'll go down as this drive will start at the 25-yard line. San Francisco set to go on offense once more. The last series for him, a little disappointing, forced to punt. And now they'll try to do better here and come away with some points as they begin this drive, first and 10. surprise at all. They're looking for the big man early in this one. The only surprise for them, he couldn't hang on to the pass. An incomplete pass leads to second and ten from the 25. Purdy looking to throw. Connects with Kittle underneath. That's a room to maneuver. And they get him down the mountain before he takes it across the 40-yard line. His first catch in this NFC Championship game, and it's a first down. And this was a nice example of an offensive coordinator scheming his guy open, just a little underneath route, just trying to free up some space, and it worked awfully well. Got him not just space, but plenty of room to run after the catch to pick up really nice yardage. On first down, this is McCaffrey. And able to work about five yards out of this as he's taken down up near the 47. A quick burst there, and he nicely bit off a pretty decent game. From the 47, it's second and five. Again, they run again, it's McCaffrey. Oh, nice move. <laughs> and he'll be brought down at the 48-yard line. That's now consecutive five-yard carries to pick up the first down. I know flashy plays, flashy plays, as people like to call them. That attracts a lot of attention. But let's face it, when you're efficient, that can control a ball game. And I love the game plan they've got going right now. Back-to-back five-yard gains. Didn't force the ball downfield, picked it up on the ground. Yeah, offensive line, they're getting it done. Offense was moving it a little bit, had them back on their heels, but they earned a brief pause by forcing the incompletion. That gives them a quick chance to regroup and try and mount a stand before they're backed up even further. Connects with Kittle underneath. Four yards the gain, and it'll bring up a third down. Completion was given up, but that's why you play zone defense, so that you can have people around the ball when it's caught, and you don't give up much run after the catch. Here's Purdy now on third and goal. The same target, same result. It's Kittle. And he takes this just a few yards shy of the red zone before going out. Back-to-back -back receptions for him, and it's another first down. Well, a lot of times when you get a magical third down situation like this, you have to think about your tight end, and he comes through for him, picking up the first down. McCaffrey running up the middle. 
And he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that. Second down. Well, that's just a pile of bodies there, and that's when you kind of find out who's a tough guy, right? Who can stand up and make a play? It was only a three-yard run, but for both sides, they had to walk away from that field like, okay, I can stand up when the going gets tough in here. A second down throw for Purdy. And his throw here is incomplete. Well, we keep stats on everything, don't we? This is one that you don't want to have. That's a second drop right here in the first quarter. Yeah, I was going to say, only in the first quarter. Certainly a shift that he wants to right quickly. Purdy with it on third and long. A hit as he throws there, incomplete. That is certainly one way to frustrate a quarterback. Run those extra defenders on the field. Dime package, lots of speed, no space to fit in the football. And that is no good. These playoff games have a tendency to be tight. You have to wonder if that missed field goal could haunt them later. Yeah, we're always looking for the key plays, right? The ones that we're going to magnify. Usually those happen in the second half or later in the game. This might be the key play of the game showing up here in the first half. Uh, Detroit back in possession of the football. Well, partner, you know, coaches always say that every play is designed to score a touchdown. Sometimes that's not really true, but last drive, that was the case. One play to get into the end zone, and now they'll try to duplicate that success here. And it's rare for those moments to happen. Incredible when they do. And you saw the celebration. Pure, unbridled joy after that one. So from inside Niner territory now, this is first and 10 at the 44-yard line. Down to the 42, second down. Defensively, we always know that he is tough and run support, and I think the way that he gets there is he understands what an offense is going to do before the ball's even snapped. A great job of scouting prior to the game, then reading, reacting, and taking the right path to the ball carrier. Last throw complete there to St. Brown. And this will move the chains again as the tackle's going to be made at the 49ers' 27-yard line. And this is good for a first down, his second grab in this NFC Championship bout. Well, I think when they look at their offense, they think to themselves, weapons, weapons everywhere. And they want to move the ball around. They want to spread it to different people. But you absolutely know they want to get this man involved as well. And that's what they just did on that play. And he is going to lose yardage here. He was unable to shake free there, and they'll cover him for a loss of a yard. Well, Brandon, we could see that play developing, and they were hoping that he was going to be able to put a move on the first guy and turn it into a big play. But no such luck. The speed on defense continues to get better and better in the NFL. Pretty nice example there of those guys being able to run from their assignments and finish off that play. Third and five. To the air again. Gone. Targets and finds Reynolds once more. And he is going to have the Lions first down by about a yard as they find a way to convert there on third down and five. From the red zone now. Gone. And that one too wide and incomplete. And here, you're down in the red zone. You need to be smart, not force anything. So that's a wise decision to just get rid of the football. Back to the air. Goff on second down. And this time he's got the hookup. It's complete. And he'll be taken down as that will take us to the end of the first quarter of play. These two teams all tied after one. The Lions with the football here to begin the second quarter as they've got it with a third down coming up. So they just need one yard here to pick up the first down. Goff wants to throw on third and one. And that is incomplete. And based on my math, They've only converted one time thus far in this game, so you can see the frustration starting to come out a little bit. Third downs, they've been a problem for them all game. They've got to start becoming solutions. Boswell's kick is good, but now there is a penalty marker on the field, so let's see what this is about. Defense. 
So they'll go ahead and accept the penalty. Automatic first down. So now then the penalty's got him set up with a first and goal. Gibbs is not going to advance very far. He'll be stopped right at the line of scrimmage. They'll say no gain on the play, and it'll be second and goal. Gibbs again, but he will go backwards as he stopped for a loss. It'll go down as a two-yard loss, and it brings up a third down. And now third and goal coming up, the loss on second down. That just means this crowd's going to get even louder, and they'll get a little bit of extra help from the defenders as they exhort them to join them in the effort. Now the pressure gets there, and he goes down just inside the 20 at the 19. Multiple players combined for their team's first sack of the game. That's quite a stand there defensively. A huge sack on third down, and that's going to force him into a field goal attempt. Now it's Chris Boswell on for the field goal try. This from 56 yards out. Boswell's kick is good. And they take the lead here now at 10 to 7. So they're able to end that drive with three points in this one possession ball game. And ideally, you want to end every drive with points. Most quarterbacks would tell you, let's end it with a kick, right? A PAT, that's number one. Field goal you'll take. Punts, you really don't want to do that. In this case, they'll take the field goal and get prepared for the rest of the game. And he brings us out past the 20 to the 24. Out comes Christian McCaffrey with the rest of the offense. And the ground game's been good, but they're losing here in the second quarter. Can they use that ground game maybe to work the air attack a little bit more? I think so, because now you can throw play action off of being able to run the ball effectively. And oftentimes, you might want to just swing your back out of the backfield, get the ball in his hands in open space, and just don't get totally away from running it, because some of these runs now, they may pop bigger as the game goes on. Yeah, they've been good with the run so far. One of the things you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride, and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before he could get a good head of steam going. It'll be a gain of five, and that'll leave him with a third and just a yard. Such a tough position to defend near the line, even when you add a second defender, but the big man shrugged off the extra body and made the play call a success. They'll try and pick it up, and McCaffrey spins past it. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. He was trying to clear the way, the big fullback. Instead, he gets a hole. And you don't see that very often on running plays from those guys, because usually they're the lead blocker. Normally, when he gets caught, it's in a passing situation. Pressure, he's brought down. Multiple players combined for their team's first sack of the game. Well, on that one, they, they go with a play fake CD, but I don't think anybody really was fooled. All eyes were fixated on the quarterback, and they got him to the ground. And to run this play successfully, you've got to make sure that everyone is doing their part. You actually have to sell this play. You've got to sell the run action. Otherwise, why do you stop at the running back? You just run straight for the quarterback and put him on the ground. Jamison Williams and the Lions get set for this next possession. He's up over 100 yards, has the touchdown. He's, he's a big-time receiver in this league, so the question becomes, how do you limit him going forward? Well, you know the guy's trying to cover him. They haven't had a whole lot of success thus far, and, and while they will still accept the challenge, maybe you have to change your focus. You have to get after the quarterback a little bit, disrupt his timing. Because right now, it feels like pitch and catch. Make sure he's not able to have clear sight lines to him, and maybe that'll slow him down. And this is not the guy you want to have play pitch and catch. And there just continues to be nowhere to run. He's bottled up again at the line of scrimmage. The running lanes have definitely not been there for him here in the first half. It's all been his fault. His offensive line hasn't given him much space. A loss results there. And he's going to be taken down. Goff is sacked. Dre Greenwood getting home on that one. And that was a passer's nightmare. The front three totally 
shut down by the defense. So he kept going backwards, hoping to find another avenue of escape. It didn't exist. Fourth down, Jack Fox on to punt for Detroit. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. This is taken at the 18. A nice punt, but a good run back as well, 13 yards. And the Niners will go on offense, first and 10. Christian McCaffrey and his 49er teammates back onto the field. And I'm wondering if maybe they don't go away from him on this drive a little bit. He's He's been great, but they haven't scored a lot of points. I think they still have to show him as a threat. Make sure he touches it a few times. But as you pointed out, use him as a decoy a little bit and get the ball in the hands of some other people in order to put more points on the board. But he's done a really nice job of establishing them with his running. Yeah, he's established himself well. Now can they put more points up? Not a huge play, but I think they're more than happy with how it turned out. Don't be surprised to see them revisit that call because there was a lane there for more than just five yards. Put it in your back pocket and break it out when you need it later. Purdy now on second down. Throw right side is going to be caught by Samuel. And he'll go out near midfield at the 49. And this is good for a first down. His second grab of this NFC Championship bout. They'll bring a tight end in motion left. Up the gut, McCaffrey. Sheds him off at the 45. And this will leave him a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. Offensive linemen love creating space for their guys carrying the ball. But when that guy also breaks tackles and creates extra yardage, they almost feel like he's one of them, and they really embrace it. Now Mason dances by him. And here he'll be brought down a little shy of the 35 at the 36. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. I think they like this drive a little bit better there, partner. Running game helping out, picking up some of the slack. Because remember the last drive, they went three and out. On first down, it's Purdy. Flushed out right. And he will find his man, Samuel. And he is out of bounds, but first he gets it inside the 10 to the 7. Give him 30 yards there. Well, he worked his way quite a bit in this first half, and with good reason. You can see it there. He is such a handful defensively, just too hard to keep him under wraps. He delivers a big play here for this offense. Now a chance to make that big play really hurt. It's first and goal just outside the five. Back to throw, Purdy. And he's going to take it in. Touchdown, San Francisco. Brock Purdy taking it in from seven yards away. And the 49ers have taken the lead here in this NFC Championship game. Nothing like understanding where your escape patches are as a quarterback. Here he's looking, but he knows he doesn't want to force anything. So when nothing avails itself, he slips past the rushers, takes it right up the middle, and takes it into the end zone. Now Moody for the PAT. And that makes it 14-10. A drive that time of six plays. And in the end, it's capped off by a seven-yard run. Here is Wisnowski to boot it away following the touchdown. Peoples-Jones going to elect not to run this out, and they'll begin at the 25. Detroit's offense ready to take over. And Charles, a very uninspired effort the last time we saw them out there was a quick three and out, and they punted the football. Yeah, and you never want to get stopped so soundly during a series, but what would be even worse now is letting it happen again right here. They've got to get going. That's yeah, caught. It's Sam LaPorta. A big play there for Detroit. 56 yards. And normally when you think about huge field-flipping plays like this, 
It's that shifty slot receiver, that burner on the outside. Not here. That's a tight end doing work down the field. Where's the oxygen mask? He's going to need it after that one. A big, big play. A real field flipper there as all of a sudden they've got a first down in the red zone. This to Laporta right side. Call it a gain of six on the play, and that will bring up second down. A few moving pieces on that play because that was an RPO, was it not? It was, but one important piece that didn't move incorrectly, the offensive line. Because when you're running this play, as he continued down the line of scrimmage, sometimes the lineman can wander downfield. If you're more than a yard downfield, it's illegal to throw the football at that point. But they held their ground, held their spot, and turned it into a nice game. They give him about four on the play, but he's marked short, so he'll be third and about the length of the football. And looked like some movement there. Let's get the call. Ball start, offense. So they accept the penalty, of course, and push the offense backwards a bit. In need of a conversion on third down. They had the big play to start the drive. Not much sense. Goff now looking to throw. And that's to the left sideline and incomplete. Fourth down now as San Fran's defense was strong in coverage. Smart move to throw that one away. You're in field goal range, so you definitely don't want to be loose with the ball. And that's great work by this defense to force a both down. Boswell's kick is good. And the lead is down to one now at 14-13. So the margin shrinks a bit as back-to-back -back drives here for him and with field goals. Yeah, we know no one's turning down three, especially in the first half. But you've got to finish these drives in the end zone. That's got to be a priority. Nice to have a reliable kicker, but outside of his agent, you know you'd rather him kick one-pointers instead of three-pointers. And he takes this near the 25, just a little pass there, call it the 26. Well, the 49ers settling in for their next drive. And this drive here beginning probably with a pair of motivated groups. Remember, the offense scored a touchdown on their last time out, looking to repeat that in Charles's defense. They were very frustrated after giving up six the last time on the field. And frankly, it's just a battle of wills in a lot of ways because you know they're both motivated. They both game plan for this drive, and they both have specific outcomes in mind. To me, it just comes down to who can execute better and which side can step up and assert its will over the other. Second and six. This is McCaffrey on the give. And he'll be brought down shy of the 40 at the 38 yard line. 81 yards rushing for him. Now a strong performance here in this first half with a Super Bowl berth on the line. That's a good, nice, crisp run for a first down. I wonder if the defense might have been loosened up a little bit, maybe anticipating a pass instead of the run that they got. Purdy to throw it on first down. He'll buy some time right. And he can't find anywhere to go with it. And he goes down. Aiden Hutchinson in there to get him. It's a loss of five. Got to assume this defense will be charging again here. It's second and 15. Shotgun handoff now to McCaffrey. Call it a gain of five that time. They'll be left with a third down at about nine to go. Two minutes remain in the first half of this NFC Championship. Here's third and nine. Purdy. They'll set up the screen to McCaffrey. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. They'll get a dozen there, and it's a first down, 49ers. And this pass rush has really been bringing the heat and has already gotten home a few times here in the first half. So how about the play call there? Sometimes if you can't protect, you've got to pull them. Screen passes like that can take a little steam out of what's been a relentless rush so far. Purdy looking to throw on first down here. They'll get this into the hands of Ayu. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. Ten more there and another first down. 
And a good quarterback facing zone coverage. If he has just a little bit of time to survey the scene, that's what's going to happen. No doubt about it. If there's no pressure, he's going to continue to pick them apart because he'll have all that time to find someone open downfield. You can only cover for so long. So maybe they want to go to a zone blitz scheme, get a little bit more pressure. Remember when Carolina did that against Denver? They lost the game ultimately. They dropped the defensive end out and he ended up with an interception in that game in Super Bowl 50. Maybe some sort of scheme like that to try and get more pressure at the passer. That good for 21 yards on the catch and run. So many times in my career, I've heard coaches talk about completions are one thing. But as long as we're there at the catch and we get guys on the ground, we can live with that. But if you're going to give up 10, 12, 15 yards after the catch, then your defense is going to be in a lot of trouble. So from inside the 20, here's first and 10 at the 18. Here's Purdy. They'll try and set up the screen. It's complete. And he's brought down just outside of the 10 at the 11. Seven yards there on the first down screen play. And with just four seconds left in this first half, a timeout call. So with four seconds to go in the half, here's the field goal unit onto the field. And this one is right through. And that'll move their lead up to four now. So a late three there, and that'll help as they head into the break. Talk about situational football. It's something they've worked on since the OTAs and mini camps the previous summer. They take care of the ball, get three points, knowing they're going to get the ball to start the second half. That's the old two-for-one special to finish things off. So we've reached halftime here in the NFC Championship. As we send you cross-country to Orlando, Jonathan Coachman is there and has our EA Sports Halftime Report. All right, Brandon, thanks. As always, what half remains in the battle to see who will take home that George Hallis Trophy and represent the NFC in the Super Bowl. We'll get back to you guys in just a moment. But first, time to look ahead to the AFC Championship coming up later today. And it should be a great one as well, as it'll be the Kansas City Chiefs doing battle with the Baltimore Ravens. 